In the summer of 2003, over 3 million people were playing Halo, and the majority of their screens were probably split in some way. Spartans could undertake each campaign mission with a partner, or shoot it out with up to three other soldiers on the same TV. By setting up a local area network, four Xboxes could be linked, allowing 16 players total to group up for team-based play, or just jump around killing each other. Originally offline, users figured out a way to tunnel internet access for their Xbox using a PC. Halo shipped with 13 multiplayer maps with the more memorable arenas including the figure 8 shaped Canyon Blood Gulch, the web of platforms Hang'em High, and the epically Arctic Sidewinder. Just like the single player, soldiers could only carry two weapons with the most devastating armaments placed in key positions on the map, along with health, camouflage, and shield boosts. The ups and downs of battle were called by Jeff Schweitzer, a 50-year-old TV and voice actor. Schweitzer has been in every Halo shooter since, Slayer. and has never once played any of them. Players could not assume the role of the Covenant in Combat Evolved's multiplayer, but the color-coded Marines did have access to their weapons. The alien guns included the automatic firing plasma rifle, charged up plasma pistol, crystal chucking needler, and a plasma grenade that unlike the standard incendiary version, stuck to any player it touched. The Marine loadout was powerful but lacked surprises, with a pistol, assault rifle, sniper rifle, shotgun, and rocket launcher. Each side of the campaign's conflict also had vehicles that carried over onto the multiplayer battlefield. The Marines got around in the dual analog-controlled Warthog and the seven-seat Scorpion battle tank, while the Covenant charged in the strafable Ghost hovercraft. Five game types were available, Slayer, Race, King of the Hill, and Capture the Flag played as you would expect, with Oddball challenging Spartans to hold a skull with both hands for as long as possible. Online play shipped standard with Halo on PC, supporting custom game types and 16 players. Six bonus maps were included with Death Island and Ice Fields, inspired by levels from the original Xbox game. The previously inaccessible Fuel Rod gun and brand new Flamethrower buffed up the arsenal, along with soaring Banshees and Rocket Warthogs appearing in the garage. Eight months before Halo 2 finally appeared, a custom edition of Halo PC uploaded an editing kit along with teases of maps in the upcoming sequel. Double kill. While leaping through levels and testing various crouch animations, certain players discovered the alert carry. The animation glitch meant any character looking at the ground would appear to have their gun at ease from the perspective of other players. This would cause the character's head to shake and roughly resemble someone speaking. Once the HUD was removed, the footage could then be used to make Halo short films, and thus, a new method of machinima was born. The most successful group of armchair actors is Rooster Teeth Productions with its ongoing series Red vs. Blue. Don't shoot! I'm the guy that bought the flag, remember? The team transcended machinima standards by producing over 100 videos, guest starring in Halo 3 on varying difficulty settings, and producing a preview miniseries for ODST and Reach. Yeah! Woo! Wow, we okay, suck! Fine, someone for me. It's about time. <laughs> Xbox Live up and running, Halo 2 brought Spartan multiplayer to consoles, and soldiers could set up custom games and hang out in lobbies between skirmishes. A matchmaking system offered Quick Match, which found players based on the last game type they selected, and OptiMatch, which listed game types on playlists. Playlists could be ranked or unranked, with official matches leveling each Spartan up to 50. Medals were earned for achievements, like sprees and consecutive kills.
Halo 2 continued the tradition from Halo PC of updating maps by putting a new sheen on infamous battlegrounds Battle Creek and Blood Gulch. The foundation map was based on the Thunderdome from Bungie's Marathon series. Due to a lack in popularity, the race game type drove off into the sunset, ushering in new options Juggernaut, Assault, and Territories. Halo 2 was the first in the series to be blessed with map packs, four in all, adding nine maps in the summer of 2006 and two more in 2007. These included an update to Wizard dubbed Warlock and a continuation of Longest called Elongation. Gemini was based on the level Duality from Marathon. Halo 2 became available for PC exclusively through Vista and the new Games for Windows Live service in May of 2007 and featured a server browser. Live Gold members could filter servers and use Quick Match to join a game in progress, but these limitations were lifted less than a year later. Tombstone and Desolation disappeared, but District and Uplift joined the roster of available maps. Vista also gave the Halo series its first achievements, something 360 owners could look forward to in Halo 3. The story in Halo 3 may have finished the fight, but for most the battle just began when the final trilogy installment launched in 2007. The campaign, which expanded cooperatively to include four players, was now available online. Players tried out two new multiplayer game types, VIP, a team-based protect or destroy hunt, and Infection, a zombie takeover inspired by a Halo 2 custom map. Game types could be tweaked even further or vetoed by dissenting officers, and players could party up easing match-to-match -match delays. The medal count blew up with weapon variants on killstreaks and even an award for linked up Bungie.net members. Halo 3 shipped with 11 maps, one shy of Halo 2's count, and two short of the maps included in Combat Evolved. Zanzibar became last resort, and Valhalla appeared to be a second derivative of Blood Gulch. A whopping 13 maps were unleashed over the two years following Halo 3's launch. Among these were Lockout's update Blackout, and the long-awaited sequel to Halo 1's Sidewinder, Avalanche. Chillout's follow-up, Cold Storage, was released on its own. <laughs> the true skill system still appeared on ranked playlists in Halo 3, but experience points were added to help match players of equal skill. Players gained XP by being on the winning team or ranking high enough individually, and lost XP by losing or disconnecting. An update in August of 08 added another XP bar to track points for each individual playlist. These and other campaign features like skulls and leaderboards all returned in Halo 3 ODST in 2009. ODST's single greatest addition to Halo multiplayer was Firefight, although some players complained about the mode's lack of matchmaking functionality, which was added with Reach a year later. The Mythic disc included every multiplayer arena from Halo 3 by itself, and made room for maps Citadel, Longshore, and a revision to Midship called Heretic. When Bungie branched out on its own, Microsoft created an in-house staff of developers under the banner 343 Industries, named after the robotic menace Guilty Spark, first introduced in Combat Evolved. With two Halo games on the 360 and one more on the way, 343 developed a central hub for franchise-related content called Waypoint. Accessible through Xbox Live for Gold members, the database launched on November 5, 2009, just a few weeks before ODST. Waypoint features fan content, descriptions and schematics of popular Halo weapons and vehicles, awards and new costume pieces for Xbox avatars, and is available on Windows 7 phones for free. It brought Halo fans together at a pivotal time for Microsoft, as support for the live service on the original Xbox ended a year later, when they shut off the Halo 2 servers on April 15, 2010. Halo Reach arrived as a concession five months later. Purchasing ODST granted players access to its beta. Reach streamlined the matchmaking process across all its modes with systems for voting and queue joining and swapped party up for the more sensible opt-out. Firefight grew with customizable enemies and the option to play as the Covenant Elite. 
The new game modes included the Flaming Skull Collecting Headhunter, a capture the flag on steroids called Stockpile, the vehicle-friendly Invasion, and Arena, which stretched the carnage across month-long seasons. Along with the five maps in one Forge world that turned Halo 2's ascension into Pinnacle, Reach brought the Ivory Tower back and renamed it Reflection. Firefight alone had nine new environments to choose from. To date, Reach has received two map packs, Noble and Defiant, carrying five additional maps along with a new firefight for it called Unearthed. Even the race option made a comeback. 343 last updated the game with a patch in September of 2011. Flags collected. Game over. In the final chapter of our Halo retrospective, we'll rewind the paths of the Covenant, Marines, Spartans, and ancient heirs to the galaxy from Halo 4 back to the Forerunner's first steps.